So what is the fastest way to learn the cloud and actually get a job? Now, this is a question that's flooded in my inbox and one that I'm going to explain to you in this video. Now, firstly, I've been working in the cloud for the past seven years and I work full time as a cloud engineer for myself. I freelance and help businesses build cloud solutions for their products and services. Now, it's taken me years of work and experience to get to this stage but can you learn the cloud and actually get a job in just a few months? And to answer this question, we first have to understand what we need to learn in order to get a job in the cloud. You see, the problem beginners have when they start learning the cloud and getting their first job is they don't know where to begin, what to learn, what to build, and how to showcase their work to potential employers. So I've put together a clear plan on how to learn the cloud fast and actually get a job. And I've removed all the random stuff that doesn't make any sense to learn first because there is just so much to learn and navigating the cloud industry is difficult, especially when you're just getting started. I'm not here to tell you just to take some cloud certifications and apply for jobs because that's the worst advice out there. Because certifications are not what they made out to be. They do help slightly and I'll tell you why in just a second. Now, irrelevant of the cloud job that you want to pursue, this upcoming step-by-step -step plan that I've created will help you secure your first job. Whether you want to become a cloud engineer, a cloud architect or a cloud consultant. This is all relevant to you and will help you break into the cloud world as fast as possible. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more to help you make your move to the cloud. Now, step one to learning the cloud fast and getting a job is focusing on the fundamentals. Now, this is the fundamental layer that you should start on and then build your cloud skills skills on top of it. Think of it as the first Lego block of your cloud journey. Now, the fundamentals consist of operating systems, databases, networking, and virtualization. Firstly, we have operating system. Think of it as the heartbeat of the computer. The operating system manages everything on the computer from accessing apps to using file directories. Now, the reason you need to learn this is because the cloud has computers too, which are known as virtual machines. These are just normal computers that run in the cloud and each of these virtual machines have an operating system. Without it, you wouldn't be able to run your applications. Now, the operating system that you should focus on is Linux. Next up, we have databases. Now, data is the most fundamental part of any cloud solution. Everything that we build and use is data-driven. The apps you use, the algorithms, AI, all of this cannot function without storing and managing data. Therefore, you need to spend time understanding the different types of databases. We have relational databases, which uses tables to store data and allows for definition of relationships between tables, such as MySQL, Postgres. And we also have NoSQL databases, which store data in documents and often in JSON format, like MongoDB. Now, there are a few more, but I recommend learning relational and NoSQL databases as they are the most common. Next, we have networking. Now, this is the backbone of the cloud. Cloud infrastructure relies on a well-designed and managed network. Learning networking will help you understand how data moves across the internet, and I suggest learning these networking concepts first. IP addresses, HTTP and HTTPS, subnets, and DNS. Of course, there are more complex and advanced networking topics, but you should ignore those and focus on the fundamentals that I've just mentioned. Finally, virtualization. You have to learn this because most cloud environments heavily rely on virtualized resources. At its core, virtualization reverts to the process of creating a virtual version of something like a server, a storage device, or even a network resource, rather than deploying the actual physical entity. Here, you want to focus on learning virtual machines and hypervisors. Now, if you want to become a cloud engineer, you will need to be comfortable with hands-on development. And once you've done the theory of the fundamentals in step one, you are ready for this step two 
which is learning Git and Bash. Now, Git is a version control system used to track changes in a code base and coordinate work among multiple engineers. So when you get a job very, very soon, you'll be able to work with code bases and push your changes into version control. And then we have Bash, which is a Unix shell and command language. Given that many cloud environments and services run on Linux-based systems, Bash has become a crucial tool for cloud engineers and just anyone working in the cloud. Bash scripting allows engineers to automate repetitive tasks, making processes like deployments, system checks, or even file manipulation faster and less error prone. So once you've done Git and Bash, then you should focus on step number three, which is learning a cloud platform. And the cloud platforms that you can pick are AWS, GCP, and Azure. Don't spend all your time deciding what cloud platform to pick. Any of the three I mentioned are a good option. I picked AWS because they are the biggest platform. And once you've picked your cloud platform, focus on the core and most popular services. For example, if you've picked AWS, type into Google most popular AWS services, and you'll see things like S3, EC2, Route 53, IAM, RDS, and so on. And these services are used all of the time in any cloud architecture. So get familiar with them. Step number four is getting certified as a cloud beginner. Now you won't have a real world experience to start with and to compensate that you should pass a cloud certification. Now, if you've picked AWS, then you should focus on passing the cloud practitioner foundational first and then the solution architect associate. The cloud practitioner foundational is the entry level AWS certification. And I know Azure and GCP have their own entry ones as well. And passing a cloud certification solidifies step three and shows that you understand the core topics of your chosen cloud platform. And it also helps your CV when you're applying for jobs. Now I'm gonna give you a few CV tips in a further step, but for now we're going into step number five, which is cloud architecture. Every project that you work on will have a cloud architecture. Now this is irrelevant of the role that you're working in. An architecture shows what you are going to build technically to solve a customer's problem. Imagine it as the blueprint of a house. It outlines how different rooms, i.e. services, are connected and how the overall structure, the cloud solution, should function and work. By learning cloud architecture, you learn the do's and the don'ts. You're building an understanding on how to design solutions that are efficient, secure, and cost effective. Now, don't forget, no one's expecting you to be a cloud architect or have a deep cloud architecture knowledge when you're just getting started, but knowing the core pillars of architecture and solution design will help you become well-rounded. As a beginner, I would focus on learning high availability, scalability, fault tolerance, and disaster recovery, and be able to explain the difference between these four and why they are important to have for any cloud solution. Step number six is work working with the cloud console. Now think of the cloud console as the control center or dashboard for a cloud platform. The console allows you to manage and monitor everything happening in your cloud environment. I use a cloud console to verify that my code changes are reflecting correctly in my AWS or cloud environment. The console is more beginner friendly rather than using command line tools. And it's a great place to start before diving into more advanced cloud tools. Now, later on in the roadmap, we'll cover infrastructure as code, but for now, just get comfortable with learning and using the console. I recommend always creating cloud services in the console first to see and understand what parameters and properties that these services have. This will help you when you start using infrastructure as code tools. Step seven is when things get interesting, and that's all about coding in the cloud. Now, I personally know how to code, and from my experience, it's made me a much better cloud engineer. Now, I also know cloud engineers that don't know how to code, but they have been able to deliver projects successfully. So should you learn to code or not? Now, the truth is you won't learn to code fast to a level where you can code full-on projects, but over three months, 
you'll be able to understand the fundamentals of programming and know how to read and understand code bases. And as you progress in your job, you automatically improve your coding skills. But start today and don't be discouraged if it's hard. Coding is all about repetition. Now in step number two, I mentioned learning Git and Bash. Now learning those is a great stepping stone towards this stage, which is learning to code. And it'll be easier for you to learn Git and Bash first and then stepping into the coding world. Now I suggest learning either Python or TypeScript. Python is more widely used, but TypeScript is also great. I personally use both, but I use TypeScript more. Python is just more beginner friendly. Step eight is to learn cloud tools. And the cloud tools that you should focus on are Terraform, GitHub Actions, and of course, your cloud platform. These are the most popular cloud tooling to get familiar with and makes you hireable for any business. This also stops you from spending too much time figuring out what you need to learn and helps you focus on the tools that matter and make a difference and get you into a cloud job fast. Step nine is building projects. And of course you need to build projects if you want to A, learn fast and B, get a job. Now I always get the questions, what projects should should you build? And this is a great question. You should build projects that include the cloud tools and the theory that you've been learning. So step number eight, Terraform, AWS, and GitHub Actions. This again is putting into practice what you've been learning and demonstrates a level of skill. Now I have made an in-depth video sharing what projects that you should build as a beginner. So check it out in the description below. Step 10 is finding jobs. Once you're certified and have at least one or two projects that you've built, it's time to start applying for jobs. And the best platform for jobs is LinkedIn. There are thousands of cloud jobs being added on there every single day. So I suggest creating an optimized profile and start applying right away. You should also go a step further and message people at companies who have vacancies and follow up to stand more, especially as a beginner breaking into the cloud world. Now learning the cloud fast and getting a job is a journey. It will take time and you'll find it difficult, but be consistent and push every day to becoming better and follow this exact step-by-step -step learning plan that I've shared, stick with it and you'll have multiple job offers in no time. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, click down below for more videos like this, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you on the next one.